Hello again everyone and welcome to the English Teacher's Guide to the GCSE Language Papers and today what we're looking at doing is creating an A star letter response in the exam. Okay, first of all, let's look at the exam paper you expect to find this on. Now this is for the Welsh board, but what I'm going to show you today works with any of the exam papers. So this will be found on the written paper, which is 20% of your total language grade, it is one hour. The main aims in this exam are you need to show that you can write for different purposes and audiences, so adult, young children, informed, persuade, advice. You've got two tasks to complete in that hour. Obviously that means that you will have half an hour each. You're looking to complete either a letter, an article, a leaflet, review, report, or speech or talk. Okay, so let's see if you've been listening this year. Two tasks you. Firstly, what do you need to include in a letter response question in order to achieve A star? So what do you need to do in terms of how a letter looks? and in terms of the mark scheme to achieve A star. And secondly, what methods should you use? So how should this all go together from planning to writing? So please pause this briefly so you can note down your ideas. Okay, let's look at the method you need. Now, what I'm about to show you is essentially the mark scheme simplified. And if you remember this for any of your language papers, no matter what exam boards you're on, if you do these things, you're guaranteed A star. It's as simple as that. So, firstly, always plan the content. I've talked about this in our other videos. You must plan. The, ease, the better the planning, the easier it is to create that A star response. Make sure your piece matches the purpose. So, you need to revise. You, know, you need to signpost that this is to persuade, this is to advise. You need to work on those elements. You need to also make sure your piece matches the genre of writing. Is it a letter or report, etc., perfectly? Therefore, if you're asked to write a letter, if I'm marking your, your work, it needs to look like a letter before I've even marked it. If it's a report, it needs to look like a report. However, if you're creating a leaflet, we don't want to see images, we don't want to see it folded in bits. If you're writing a magazine article, we don't want to see the column, just the writing. But it needs to essentially look, especially those letters and those report tasks, like the piece itself. Use a variety of sentence types. So you need to think about how you can use simple, compound, and complex, starting off with an LY word, adjectives, and a comma is a good idea. You need to show that you can use those sentences for different effects. And that's something you would have worked on with your narrative or descriptive writing pieces. So that's something you need to bear in mind, bringing different elements together. You need to also include a variety of sentence starters, not just the, the, then, then, which obviously reflects a less intelligent style of writing. You need to use a variety of complex punctuation, so I'm looking to you to use your semicolons, your brackets, your dashes, but not just use them, make sure you use them for deliberate effect as well. Again, go back to your descriptive writing, your story narrative writing, to remember how to do this. You need to consider the formality of the piece. Is this formal or informal? Because it will have an impact on what you are writing. Different paragraph lengths are important. Sometimes you can use one sentence paragraphs, which shows a real variety. Complex words need to be spelt correctly. But obviously, you don't forget the basic words as well. Make sure your whole text structure is effective. It's structured in the correct way. Everything is cohesive. It all flows together nicely, so topic sentences is a key way in which you can do that. Make sure the piece is interesting. You know, if you're an exam marker and you're marking 300 exam pieces and yours isn't the most entertaining in the world, they're not going to spend the time necessarily finding marks for you. And finally, and I think this is key, this is your opportunity to show off your skills, your writing ability. You know, let's use the example of a footballer. If I kick a football or a ball and say, show me your skills, they're not just going to trap the ball with their foot and stare blankly at me. And that's what some people do when they're getting Ds. You know, they are just writing something down, not really thinking about it. An A-star candidate, this is your time to show off that you are an excellent writer. You know, so your tricks in terms of writing, your variety of sentences, your complex punctuation, your complex vocabulary, there's your skills. You, know, you need to sh enjoy the fact that you can show off in this. This will be the easier, hopefully, the more fun exam as well, if there is such a thing. 
Okay, we're going to look at two types of letters, formal and informal. Let's look at the formal method quickly. So obviously, top right hand corner, it's your address. One line underneath is the date. Again, you can make up the address, you can make up the date, it doesn't matter. They just want to see they're doing the right thing. On the left hand side of the letter, you need to make sure you include the address that you're sending it to. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it makes your letter seem even more formal. Then we leave a line and greeting. Begin with dear, the name of the person, or sir and madam if you don't know who they are, and you put a comma after their name. Next is the introductory sentence. So underneath the name, or you leave a line and you write against the left hand margin, you introduce why you are writing this. The main body, number of paragraphs, this is the real detail. You explore what you're writing about using all those skills that we've already referred to. Concluding, new paragraph, we write a short conclusion suggesting what you're looking for in the future. You then on a new line need to write yours faithfully because yours sincerely suggests you know the person intimately. And then on another line underneath you write your name. Okay, if you need to pause this or print screen this so you can note these things down, then do so quickly. Right, well, let's look at a question. This isn't exactly the kind of thing you're going to get, but it's pretty much spot on in terms of the things you should expect. Write a letter to the managing director of a company of your choice complaining about their recent service. So, managing director suggests obviously someone of high status, so that suggests formal, uh, the complaining about your choice, so it's your, you know, there's elements of persuasion that need to be occurring here, and we know that we're talking about the poor service that we've received. Let's look at planning now. How do we plan this? Well, it's a bit different from your literature essays, but still similar in some senses. So you can see that I have got the different sections I need. So the introduction, poor service, disappointed, this is my laptop broke, then I go on to talk about the helpline, my conclusion is I'm not happy and I want results, and then I sign off. I'm, all I'm doing is just structuring the work very quickly so I know the order in which I'm going to be talking about. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to avoid being halfway through my letter, not knowing the direction I'm trying to go in, and also I don't want to stop halfway through trying to think about what I need to write about. It's there, it's done. What I've also done in my own planning, which is a good tip for you, is that I've noted down all the different types of punctuation. Now, when I'm writing my letter, or when I'm proofreading afterwards, I can cross off those types of punctuation so that I know at the end that I've used them. I could obviously want to use them more than once, so I might put one line through and I've used it once, another line through and I've used it again, and so on and so forth. I've also included some vocabulary that I know I want to try and use in this work. Apoplectic meaning really angry, if you're interested. And finally, Note down the elements of a starter you forget to use. So for me, I forget to proofread sometimes. You might also think to yourself, well, I don't really use a variety of sentence starters. And that's my plan. That takes about five minutes. But it's obviously going to help me for the next 25. And let's look at what an answer should look like. So here we are. There's my address. There's my date. I've not included the address I'm saying to this time, but again, you're more than welcome to do that. So let's have a read. Dear Sir, Madam, I'm writing to unfortunately explain the huge level of disappointment I feel in regards to the recent service I've received from you. Introductory paragraph. Being a loyal customer for many years, and I must emphasize the word loyal, I was devastated when my operating system not only crashed, but then caused the keyboard on my laptop to explode, creating a hailstorm of keys, placing myself and my two-year-old pug, Sir Pugleton, in grave peril. I was worried he wouldn't make it. Poor service does not end there. So cohesion, different sentence types, distressed, concerned, and rather apoplectic. I rang your customer helpline, which charges a ridiculous rate to find a savior. Clive, unfortunately, was not that man. In fact, he knew less about your software than Sir Puggleton. Once again, I'm sorely disappointed at the level of service received after the loyalty I've shown you. I feel it's time you showed some loyalty to me preferably in the form of a new laptop. I look forward to hearing from you swiftly and apologetically, says my conclusion. Your loyalist customer should be yours faithfully, James Rupert. Now you can see, all the elements of A-star are here. Sentence types, vocabulary, punctuation, cohesion, structure all the way through, formal voice, writing to complain. It's all here. 
I'm not necessarily suggesting you have to try and make your pieces funny. But what I'm saying is I've showed off, I've had some fun with this. You know, I'm still writing a letter of complaint to a managing director, but rather than just, dear sir, I am writing because I have received poor service. Here are my reasons why I've received poor service. I look forward to hearing you. I've had some fun with it. I've used Sir Puggleton. I've talked about a hailstone of keys. It makes it more interesting. Again, let's go back to our marker. Your paper number 237 of 300. He gets this on his lap or she gets this on her lap. It's more interesting. They're going to enjoy it. They're going to want to give you better marks. So please pause this if you want to have a quick look at it again. But let's move on to informal letters now. So the method isn't too dissimilar. All we really need on the right hand side is our address and a date. We don't necessarily need their address. In fact, I'd ask you to avoid that now because that looks more formal. The greeting. You can still use dear, but you could even start to use things like hi or hello buddy, something like that. You know, it sounds more informal. Introductory sentence. We still are writing a reason why, but here you might start with brief questions. You know, how are you? How is everything? And then we could move on to the purpose because again we're friendly we I know this person our main body is the same although our tone needs to be slightly less formal concluding new paragraph once more summarize while we're writing a letter and then depending on how informal you are being you, know, you might write yours sincerely or bye or see you later and then you write your name now what I want to highlight to all of you is that just because this is an informal letter doesn't mean you need to start using text speak or things like that. We are still having to show the mark we can use complex vocabulary and complex structures. So obviously you want to bear in mind that the informal in the real world is slightly different to the informal you need to show in the exam. Let's look at our planning and here's the question for that planning. Write a letter to a friend persuading them to take part in a 10k bike race for charity. Again, we're now writing a letter of persuasion. It's about a bike ride that we're trying to get them to go on. Let's look at our planning here. Very similar. As you can see, method's exactly the same. Method will be the same for every question. I obviously, I need to tailor my, my planning for the question. And let's look at what the informal piece now looks like. So there's my formal. Let's scroll down. As I see I prepared this earlier. This is my informal. So there you go, there's the address, there's the date. I do not need to have their address on the left hand side. But again, let's see if this is interesting as well as all the other things we need to do. Salutations friend, how are you? It's certainly been a long time since I saw your boat race, as you love to call it. So you can see it is more informal. However, I'm still showing that I can use complex vocabulary, complex punctuation, sentence types, so be wary of that. Anyway, so cohesion, enough with all the boring small talk. I have far more urgent matters to bring to your attention. Are you ready? Let's not beat about the bush. You are an amazing cyclist. No, no, I don't want to hear it. You are. You may well remember that I'm also an amazing at raising money for charity. Remember the baked bean bath for Red Nose Day? I'm still having tomato sauce related nightmares. So why don't we combine our two powers and cycle for charity? Think about it. You're not only getting to spend time with your favourite person in the world, me, not Neymar, you're also increasing your already incredible fitness via an easy 10 kilometer cycle and you will be rewarded with that inner happiness that comes with helping those less fortunate than ourselves. So what do you say? You don't have to let me know now, but it would be amazing to see you again and ride into the sunset like two superheroes helping the needy. I've even thought of a catchphrase for us. It's cycle time. I know it's not the best, so you just have to tell me what you prefer on the starting line in July. Can't wait to hear from you again, buddy boy. Your favourite, James. So you can see once more, the tone is slightly more informal. However, I'm making sure that I'm using vocabulary, punctuation for effects and complex punctuation. It's all cohesive. It all flows together nicely. Now in a half an hour response, you're probably going to end up with, I would say, hopefully, at least a side and a half, maybe even two sides. That's what you should be aiming for, depending on your handwriting and your speed. And these aren't quite like the literature essay questions. So, thank you for paying attention. 
please refer back to this in the future. On the page itself is a link which takes you to the past papers. But remember, the best thing I can say to you is revise that method because if you proofread with that method in mind, you'll always get A star. And if you're going to be getting A star, you need to show off your skills. You know, this is your chance to show off your ability as a writer. So make sure you do that. Keep that in mind and you'll always achieve A star. So thank you. Well done.